course. Are those prayers being answered, Rose? Well, uh, that is for God to do. That is for God <laughs> to do. Good day. I think all I would say, if I can come in, is um, that I think we shouldn't believe that the world is basically free of ideology. Mm. Along come these religious people and start, you know, putting prayers everywhere and, and muddying the water. We, do, we live in a world where we're surrounded by ideologies, messages, mm. most of them commercial. You, know, you can't walk down a street without an injunction to eat more chocolate or buy this holiday or whatever. And occasionally you get some reminders to pray to God. So in the midst of reminders to go shopping, you get an odd message to, to pray to God and an odd message to, I don't know, go to your local library or something. What I'm saying is the world outside our doors is full of messages. Yeah. Some are religious, some are commercial, some are public information. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there. And I think it's a bit naive of certain militant atheists to go out there and argue as though religious messages are the only and most powerful messages out there. They're not. They're a tiny, tiny little voice that occasionally says things like, you know, be nice to your neighbor. And if you have a problem with that, why don't you first start with the messages that are emanating from, you know, the drinks companies, the tobacco companies, the car companies? Aren't these more fitting targets of, you know, people's anger and self-righteousness than the odd reminder to be nice to your brother? Alan, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Rose, thank you. Well, I, I just think your last speaker was brilliant. I'd love his, uh, a copy of his book. <laughs> oh, don't give it too many plugs. <laughs> He's just been criticising commercialisation. <laughs> well, it, it, Alan, it, thank you very much. Rose, thank you so much. Rose, thank you. And, uh, take care. Have you, when you do, when, when, what time do prayers take place in the Commons? Have you missed today's? Well, or, no, no, we, we, they're on recess. The Commons are on course, recess yeah, of course, this week, yeah. yes. I <laughs> but I will continue to pray because I believe it. Please, pr pr please continue to pray. You're our last hope. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Keith. Bye-bye. Uh, more to come as well. 9.32, we'll come to calls and uh, we'll come to Simon with the weather. Right, it's Baroness Farsi. Does she have a point? Is Britain being taken over by militant secularists? We have uh, Dr Evan Harris, a former Lib Dem MP, Vice President of the British Humanist Association. Uh, Dr Harris, I presume. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, Andrew Marsh from Christian Concern. Uh, Christian Lobby Group. Hello, Andrew. Morning, Nicky. Hello, hello. And Mark in, in Lancashire, uh, you want to come on after Nathaniel's call, which got a lot of text. He said that if you, if you don't go through Jesus Christ, well, he's basically, he's the only conduit to eternal paradise. There ain't no other way. Mark, you want to come back on that? Yeah, I do. Um, I'll just nail my colours to the mast. I'm, I'm a lifelong Christian. I'm 52 years old. Jesus did say, I, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But he also said, judge not, that you be not judged. And the, the, tenant, uh, the basic pillar of uh, Christianity is that Jesus died for all mankind. And I don't think it's for us to speak for Jesus and say who he will and will not take to heaven. All right, well, the, Rose, Rose took your position. She took issue with him as well. Thank you for putting that into context. Stay there if you will. I want to speak to a couple of other people before we go to uh, a couple of other callers before we go to uh, Evan and Andrew on this. Councillor Imran Khan, Tory councillor from Banstead, on the issue of prayers at council meetings, do they have a place? Uh, good morning, Nikki. Well, I, I don't think uh, prayers or politics in general um, should be a part of politics. I'm all for Legend, doing yeah. what the judgment clearly says states that councils can do, which is pray prior to the meeting itself proper. It shouldn't be a part of the formal agenda process, however. I don't need um, God's help to help me uh, make the facts. Uh, you know, local residents ask me issues on rubbish collection and about the roads, for example, and I look at the facts to do that. Um, but um, I am all, you know, I, I've got no problem with people praying prior to the meeting. OK, thank you for that. Um, it's, it's the time and the place, basically. Andrew Marsh, I, I would imagine you have great sympathy with what Baroness Fazi is saying here. Totalita rem something reminiscent of totalitarian regimes, a rising tide of militant secularisation. Do you echo those comments, Andrew? Yes, I do. I think, and I agree with Alan Bolton as well, uh, when you look into it, as he does, and he said that he was surprised to find it once he began to examine the evidence, is that uh, there is a highly organised, media-savvy campaign uh, on the part of some uh, atheists, I, th I think, a small minority but very vocal, uh, to try and stamp, find any whiff of Christian, particularly Christian influence in public life and to stamp on it and to squeeze it out. One of the things, or a couple of things I think are very interesting about uh, Baroness Varsi's comments 
today. Uh, the first is that she doesn't speak as a Christian herself, and yet she uh, is speaking of the benefit of the influence of Jesus Christ she speaks on our as nation. A, she speaks as a theist. Yeah, yeah but, but she's not uh, uh, personally uh, claiming uh, to belong to the Christian she faith. She believes but, in the same God, presumably, but, doesn't she? But she's expounding yeah. uh, the benefits and f- uh, focusing our attention, mm. highlighting the benefit that uh, the influence of Jesus Christ uh, over many hundreds of years has brought to this nation in terms of our freedoms, our beliefs, our structures, our common values, and how it has actually created a culture and a society and even a political system that shows respect for the other but brings us together rather than drives us apart. And, the, uh, and, and she does that, uh, not... Uh, speaking as a Christian. I think that's a very helpful uh, point to underline, uh, to recognise that the influence of Jesus Christ, who is, after all, a, a man who... But some is- of the great Christians, are some of the most, some of the most uh, faithful people of religion, are secularists. I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand There's that. a difference between secularism and atheism, isn't there? Uh, well, I, Look at America, the separation between church and state. Yeah, and I think that uh, somehow, uh, sometimes some of those uh, camp- secularising campaigning groups uh, set up a false dichotomy for us here. They seem to suggest that you, can either, you will either end up in a, uh, in a totalitarian regime of, uh, ruled by one religion or another that dictates on every area of citizens' life, whatever their faith. Theocracy, yeah. Or that you've got to, uh, or to avoid that, the only other option is to exclude Christian influence and possibly the influence of other religion from every area of public life. So they want to say that it is uh, fine perhaps for you to practice your religion in the privacy of your own home, uh, to pray at home uh, or behind closed doors, but in terms of our public life and our civic life and our community life, that has no part to play in how dare you bring it into this public domain. We need to be really clear what that is. Dr. Evan Harris. Well, I don't recognise that description. I mean, it's quite it's hard to find one, I think, uh, more of a secular campaigner than me. And what secularism is about, secular campaigning is, is saying that... Um, we want to end religious privilege, that it shouldn't have a special place. There shouldn't be reserved places in Parliament for people with religious views as opposed to any other uh, world worldview. That there shouldn't be schools that are allowed to say you can't come to this school that you live next door to, that you pay your taxes towards because you're of the wrong religion or no religion. Or you can't even teach in this state school funded 100% by the taxpayer because you go to the wrong building uh, on a Sunday or you, you're, you're, you're living with someone you're, you're not married to. So, that's, so what we're saying is, and this is true the worldwide, that secular liberal democracies are the best buttress for religious freedom of everyone. And I think we need to be very clear that those people who say that, that, that there are sort of militant atheists, I mean, it's like saying you sleep furiously. <laughs> it's just a, a, an atheist with an opinion is called militant, by religious groups who, like, uh, like Andrew's group, are a political campaigning organisation. He's perfectly entitled to argue in the public sphere, as he's doing now, that we should allow people to discriminate against gay people on the basis of their religious views. That is what Christian Concern for One Nation uh, does, campaigns for. I disagree with it, but it's perfectly entitled to do that. It campaigns for a number of other things. It shouldn't do it from a position of privilege. It should just get stuck into the political debate like everyone else. A free market of thought, yeah? Yeah. Absolutely. So it's just a question of saying they shouldn't be a privileged position for religion. Andrew, in a minute, I will let you come back in a minute. I want to hear, this is is, uh, over to Matthew in Derby now. It's your call. Matthew, you believe that there has not been a proper Christian perspective on the show yet? Um, It it concerns me because every time I hear... um, you on a show, Nikki. You, you you strike me as, as being very um, anti-religion, and that that really has bled through on the show today, especially the call regarding um, was a call. children who die in infancy going to hell. Right. Um, it doesn't stipulate that in the Bible. That's that's a Catholic that's a Catholic doctrine. All right. And to say that to say that Catholicism represents the whole of Christianity is is. No.
No, I mentioned that because Baroness Fasi is on her way to meet the Pope in, in the Vatican today. So that's why it was relevant to say, having sh having accused secularism of totalitarianism, there is much that Catholicism has on the record apologised for. It's apologised over the Holocaust. It's apologised to Darwin. It's apologised to Galileo. It's apologised for the Inquisition. It's apologised for any number of things. So I'm, that was I was purely putting that in context. But listen, over to you. Tell us your position on this. Well, I'm, I'm a father of two children, one of them school age. <clears throat> and at school, it's very difficult for my son to represent his Christian values. He's only a young child, but he still has Christian values. Um, he, he, we believe in the creation. We believe in, in the Bible, um, literally. Um, but we, we don't, we don't um, ram our beliefs down people's throats. Um, we let people express their opinions, and we have open debate about them. We don't necessarily believe everything they, the, the secularists or the atheists say, and they don't believe everything we say. But what I think we're getting into an argument here is we have one part of society, the secularists or the, and the atheists, pushing their agenda into, into, into society, which I think marginalises Christians. I mean, <laughs> the, the debate you had on earlier, you had Richard Dawking on. And I know that Richard Dawking is, is, is fabulously uh, well-educated, and he has an argument about not allowing creationism to be taught in school, to, to, to get rid of it altogether, and that kids should only be taught about evolutionism. Now, if you don't believe in evolutionism, my son's going to be taught this at school, and he hasn't got a right to rebuttal that argument. This is a very, Evan, Evan Harris, this is a very, very good point, the teaching of non-science in science classes. Evan Harris. Well, I don't think, I don't, I don't think non-science should be taught as science in any classes. So it's not good enough to say we shouldn't teach uh, creationism as how the world came into being and how the, the uh, animals and humans evolved in science lessons. It shouldn't be taught as fact in religious education lessons. People should...